Hi, this is Max, and this is going to be a short tutorial on scripting in Planetoid Pioneers. So, um, let's start by opening the editor. You do that with F2 and um, making a new blueprint. Um, we open the blueprint library with F6 and load one of the blueprints. Um, this is the um, blueprint editor where we can rename the blueprint. So, let's call it. Um, Junk create hello world, save the blueprint, and now we created a new blueprint. Um, this blueprint has a script attached to it, and we can open it by pressing this button. Um, that opens um, Zero Brain Studio, which comes with the game, and it already has this um, script, uh, this basic script um, attached to it. But if you don't have that, you should um, write this bit out. Um, Every blueprint has two functions. Um, the first one is the build function, which um, the the contents of the build function um, uh, happen when the when the blueprint gets created once, and the update function, which gets called on every frame, um, that means the contents of the update function um, are being done constantly all the time, many times a second. So. I write a simple line here like print hello world um, and save this um, control s or there might be a button somewhere I don't know and now switch back into the game and spawn this object I do that with the insert key on the keyboard um, we should see it writing hello world but it doesn't which is interesting Call it hell world by the way. Let's uh, look. Oh, there we go. Okay, this wasn't saved. Um, so now we have this box which, um, exactly in the moment it gets created, writes hello world um, down here in the um, print section. So um, that's how you create something very simple now. Let's add something more interesting to the script um, by using the update function. So one thing we can do is we can um, get the get a reference to the um, to the movable object of this um, of this assembly. So the this assembly has only one movable object, and we can um, get that with the function get master move, which we call on self, and self is a reference. To the to the assembly itself, um, and uh, usually if there's if there's just one object, you can always get it with get master mo. But usually, if you have more objects, you would get it by the exact name. So you would do something like get a mo by name, and then enter a name here. Um, but in this case, let's just stick with the get master mo. So this is a reference to the master mode, and now let's um, check if something, if the master mode touched something. Um, there's a function we can call on this mode, and um, there's actually a whole, um, a whole uh, set of function we can set of functions we can call on modes, and um, you can have a look at that in the um, Lua scripting documentation, which is this one. Um, You'll find it in the game game root folder under docs luamendocs.html, but eventually there might be a button in the game to open it too. Um, so over here in the in the top section of this documentation, you have all the different kinds of objects you can call function on functions on, and um, in this case we have a mo. So we click the mo, and this is all the functions we can call on this master mo we just um, referenced in the script. Um, so what we want to do is we want to find find out if um, something has touched this uh, mo. So um, let's use Control F to find something. And let's see. There we go. So there's some functions collided, um, which are for checking collisions, and um, we can jump to them by just clicking them. The function we want to use right now is get collided with mo or toe. Um, so that checks if um, 
if the movable object has collided to either another movable object or a terrain object. And um, if you click these functions, you get some, some more details on the functions, um, short description usually, and if it has arguments, you see the arguments here too. Um, arguments are the things you write in the brackets behind the function. So, uh, for example, you could set the acceleration of this object, which we're going to do later, and you will have to enter the acceleration in the brackets, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then there's something the function returns. So. Um, we can copy this function with this button and then paste it here. And now this function returns um, a boolean which either says uh, yes, uh, this block has collided with Moto, or no, this block doesn't have collided with Moto. Um, and this is used for this if statement. So um, this if statement only gets executed if um, this function says yes, um, this block has collided with a motor. Um, so now we decide what happens if this um, if this actually did happen and there's a function we can use um, called add acceleration. Let's, let's have a look at that in the documentation too. Um, there we go. Um, so this function has an argument but doesn't return anything. So let's copy that and go back to the editor. And there you see the, the argument which you have to fill in. And um, what we want to do is we want the block to hog up. So um, you could just create a new vector here. Um, actually, let's make a variable for this. So let's call it acceleration. And put that acceleration in here. So whatever we fill in here is going to be the acceleration which is added to the block if it collided something. Um, now we could make this acceleration just a vector like this. Um, and then write some values here, let's say 0, 200. And we can actually try this out to see what happens. work again. Wait, let's save it. It's saved. Oh, there's a Lua error. I see. So if you have a Lua error, this is a good example here. So if you have a Lua error, you'll see this little red text down here. And you press Ctrl F8 to show the Lua error. Um, and there we go. Attempt to index global block in nil value. That means block doesn't even exist in the script. And let's have a look. Is there a line? Yes, there's a line, so line 16. That's probably the most important bit about your error. Um, so we jump to that line, line 16, and we see block is a nil value. And that's true because we didn't define block. It's called block mo and not block. So there's no block. So let's replace that. There we go. Let's spawn that again. We need to refresh the game once, I think. Yeah, there we go. So you see this block is getting pushed to the left now because whenever it touches something, it, some acceleration is added. And um, this just goes somewhere to the left. And that's because the actual coordinate system of this um, map is not like you might expect. This is up, this is left, uh, this is right, this is left, this is down. Um, it's more like this, this is up, this is left, this is right, this is down. And that's because it's a round planet um, and the coordinate system isn't rounded like the whole planet. So what we have to do for vectors like this acceleration is we have to, we have to actually take this into account. Now we could um, rotate this vector um, or we could just take the, the gravity vector and turn it because the gravity vector for this object always po points down to the um, to the center of the planet. Um, so the center would be here and the the gravity vector would point here. Um, now if we take this vector and just turn it and make it point up, then this object will always fly up when we um, uh, when it touches something. Um, so let's do it that way. Um, that's a function to get the um, gravity vector of this uh, object. Um, simply get gravity vector 
I'm not going to look up all these functions now, but um, you can always just um, if you don't if you're not sure what a function, you just start with whatever you want to do, so get or set. And then in this case, I want to get something with gravity, so I write gravity, and then I see some suggestions here, and I can just go down with the down arrows and select whatever I think is what I want. So in this case, gra gravity vector, and there's actually a function on most because this only works on most particle systems and scenes. It doesn't work on everything, of course. Um, now this function get gravity vector. Um, makes the acceleration be the gravity vector. Now we want to turn it. So we do that by adding a minus here, which is um, which basically flips the gravity vector from pointing downwards to upwards. And now we increase the gravity vector by a, by a number because we don't want uh, we don't just want the gravity to be inverted. We also want to increase it so it actually jumps up and not just floats up slightly. Um, so there we go, we save that again, jump back into the game, and spawn that object. And now you see it's hopping whenever um, it touches something. So yeah, that's how you do a simple a simple script. And um, another interesting thing we could maybe do is add a counter to it, how many times it hopped on my head. so I can make this a little mini game so whenever it uh, touches my head the counter gets increased but when it touches the floor the counter gets reset to zero so let's do that um, so the first thing we do let's make this shut up the first thing we do is we um, define a variable um, for how many times it's um, popped on my head um, let's call it hop counter and obviously it starts with zero, and we define it on this on the assembly itself. Um, so it's a part, it's a part of the assembly. If I would just make a hop counter here, um, like this, then it would be in the in the global variable space. So every assembly could access this um, this variable, but we only want this to be part of this assembly, not all assemblies. Um, so we define it as part of self. Um, now we have a hop counter and we want it to increase every time it hops on a mo, but we don't want it to increase when it ho we want to reset it actually if it um, hops on a toe. So what we do is we um, make a function for get collided with mo. Is there such a function? Let's check. Yes, there's such a function. And then um, whenever it hopped on a mo, we take the hop counter. Um, and increase it by one. So we take the hop, hop counter um, and add the hop counter to itself plus one. So that increases it by one. Now let's also um, let's reset it first, and then we write the hop counter to the screen somehow. Um, now if the block collided with a toe, um, let's add an else here. So that's a second. Um, second uh, kind of statement um, if the block mo oops, collided with a toe then we reset the hop counter to zero um, so we have two kinds of um, statements here uh, one is this which resets the, the counter and one is this which increases the counter. Um, now we want to write the, the hop counter um, somewhere. So um, could just print it and let's let's begin with that. Next up I show you a function to actually write it above the, the movable object. So here we go, let's insert that again. Oh, and it doesn't hop. Yes, um, that's right. So it doesn't hop um, because we, we only have this statement which makes it hop in the in the statement for colliding with moles, but not in the statement for colliding with toes. And for the sake of some simplicity, we just copy it. Um, obviously, this could be written in a more efficient way. Um, so there we go. 
now it hops and when it hops on my head the number increases and when it hops on the floor it gets reset again I need another one obviously this spams the log now because there's multiple objects printing so let's restart let's actually try this once not so easy Oh, it jumped off. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, there we go. So if it if it touches me for too long, obviously it gets more acceleration because for every every frame it touches me, um, there's 100 acceleration added to it, and obviously it adds up. So it gets it gets a bit huge, and um, this also adds up on the number, um, which we could fix somehow, maybe with a delay or something. But for the sake of simplicity, we just keep it the way it is right now. Um, so yeah, this kind of works. It's it's <laughs> it's a hard game actually, but um, let's make the the hop counter. Let's let's print it above the object. So there's a function actually there's a function of self um, called write to screen. Um, oh, let's look this up because this is only a function of scenes, but we want to call this function on the mo itself. So let's have a look in the um, documentation because I'm not sure about this. Okay, so these are the scene ones. Let's jump through this to the mo ones. Oh, there I only see what scene ones. Okay, I was wrong. So um, scene where the screen my broke post is what we want, and there's there's a few different um, kinds of these functions, just with more arguments for, for example, for color options. Um, so we might wanna no let's let's just start with the simple simplest one. Um, so here we go. Let's copy that. Um, so we have a text, a position, um, of a decision that we want to make it centered, and a color. And now um, the text is obviously the hop counter. Um, position is the position of the object. Um, we can get that with. Um, let's use the position of the block. So, block mo get position um, gives us the, gives us the position of the block. Um, so let's put that here. Then, do we want to make it centered? Yes. We enter true um, and color. Um, so there's a color object we create here, um, and let's just make a random color. I'm not sure what it's going to be. Um, so these colors are red, green, blue, and then the alpha value, <coughs> which <coughs> get added up to to some color. Um, so there we go. We need to restart once. Oh, and there's an error again. Let's have a look. Attempt to call method write to screen no value. Okay, and that's because it tries to call write to screen on self, um, but there is no function write to screen on self. There's only a function scene write to screen. So this needs to be fixed. And now it should be working. Oh, it's still not working. No matching overload found. So it says the there's no um, function which takes these arguments we have. So we have a um, we have a string, a vector, a bool, and a color. Um, let's have a look. String, vector, bool, color, and this is not a string. This is a number. So we need to call to string on this to um, make this an actual string. Now it should be writing the counter. For some reason it's here, which is um, very interesting. Um, okay, the counter works well, but why is it here? Get more position. That is very interesting. Is this the world position? Um, Let's use the position of the assembly instead of this block. 
Um, this is very interesting. I'm not sure why this is happening right now. Um, so this should be right there. Let's have a look if there's an object there. Um, oh, it's written on the screen. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yes, um, so we obviously want to use um, get the screen by word pass and then we can use this old, well, whatever, let's do it like this. Um, so this was just writing it to a, to a um, Position on the actual coordinate system of the screen, which has zero zero in the bottom, in the top left, and um, one one in the bottom right, or something like that. Um, actually, not one one, but um, yeah. So now we have an error again. There is no such overload. Um, string vector vector bool. Yes. Uh, so for some reason, this function has a different um, requires different. Uh, argument. So let's have a look again. By well, pause. String vector uh, vector bool. Okay. Um, string vector vector bool. So there's no color on this one. And instead, there is an offset vector here, so we can actually um, use that to offset it slightly upwards. Um, so now we have the string, um, the position, this offset vector, which makes the text appear above the box slightly, because we entered in a vector here, which which points up, and the um, center it's option again. So there we go. Now the text is above the box, and it went into space. Okay, let's actually try to get some points here. There we go. The point counter is completely ridiculous, but I think uh, you get the concept. Um, and that was kind of a, a little example of what you can do um, in scripting. And obviously there's a whole lot of more possibilities. This is just a very simple example. And all these blueprints um, you see in this library are written in Lua and you can actually um, access any of them you can just um, open whatever you want and just edit it so if we open this um, this crap for example and just press this button you can you can see how this is um, how this is scripted so this is all open source um, um, all ready to edit for you you can just mess around with anything um, remix as you like and same goes for scenes actually, so if you open the activity, go down here, you have the script of this um, activity and you can mess with that too, so this one has just a simple script, but um, there's there's whole um, game modes like the racing activity which are written in this, um, which are written as an activity. So yeah, um, have fun I guess.